Brian, happy World Vape Day. It's good to see you. Same to you and likewise. And uh, how's things uh, down in Down Under? Uh, you know, uh, testing times, as as I'm sure it is in the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, but in the world of vaping, you know, the campaign keeps ticking along. We're still uh, doing what we can to fight for uh, the rights of Australian vapors to access nicotine products and, uh, you know, essentially have a safer avenue away from smoking uh, as opposed to the government-approved method, methods which simply don't work. Right, right. Now it's it's really interesting to hear what your hear your experience. Uh, you're in a jurisdiction where it's it's more strict than most places in Europe. Yeah, no, I mean I'm really impressed to hear what you guys have been doing uh, in response to a very tough regulatory environment you've got in uh, in Australia. And I'd love you to talk us through your experience getting the uh, petitions and the galvanizing vapors in Australia to actually sign up. Give us a few numbers to start with. I mean, sure. Who, how many how many vapors did you actually reach out to? Sure. So so I, I think I'll run through some, some top line figures uh, and then I can sort of talk about the regulatory schmozzle that is the Australian vaping scene. Um, in terms of uh, total subscribers that we have, we have about 30,000 subscribers uh, on Facebook. We have about 20,000 likes and followers. Uh, on Twitter, we have a few thousand. And Instagram, we're slowly building. Uh, in hindsight, we should have started our Instagram account probably at the same time that we started the Facebook account, but hindsight's 2020. Uh, so we've got a broad base, uh, and most of them, uh, bar the odd person that trickles through from 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 overseas, uh, the, the vast majority of our followers are based here in Australia. They're Australian vapors, and they're part of the vaping community. Uh, and how we got to that point, we, we never really initially thought we would. Uh, two and a half years ago when we started this campaign, we thought we'd do an online petition and it might get a few hundred signatures and we'd put together a letter and send it to politicians saying, hey, uh, Australians can buy cigarettes that kill two and three long-term users, uh, but they're not allowed to buy a product that doesn't, so you should legalise that. And that was it. We thought it'd be an online petitioner to go from there. What ended up happening is Australian vape vendors uh, really got behind the campaign. They saw our petition that was running online uh, and they pushed it out to their customers. And then their customers pushed it out to their friends who vaped. And then their friends who vaped did the same again. Uh, and in a very short period of time, we went from having a couple of hundred signatures to a couple of thousand and then a couple of thousand to 10,000 and then 10,000 to 20,000. Uh, and it's it's been building from there. Uh, and they're not just signatures at this point. These are all active members of our campaign who donate to our campaign, who buy our merchandise. We've got mugs and T-shirts and even portable vape chargers with legalised vaping branding on it, mm -hmm. uh, including our own vaping juice as well. Uh, and that all, that all goes towards our campaign to keep you know, pushing for legal nicotine vaping in Australia. Right, right. But I'm just curious. You, you, you said that, the, the, that when the, uh, the vape... Uh, juice producers or the the, the the vaping companies got involved it accelerated the spread um, and it, it, I get that if it's in vape shops if they're, they're, there's a point when there's a point of sale but are there vape shops in Australia yes yeah, so so this is where it gets very confusing so vaping in and of itself is not illegal in Australia vaping with nicotine effectively is okay uh, and about 80 percent of vapors vape with nicotine so uh, without diving without deep diving too much into the australian regulatory system because it is an absolute mess uh essentially you can own a vape shop in australia and you can sell vaping products as long as those vaping products do not contain nicotine which 80 percent of vapors use if you as a vapor want to access nicotine you cannot buy it in australia you have to buy it overseas because it cannot be sold here mm. and you must have a doctor's prescription mm. uh, that's the federal law at a state level even if you have a prescription technically you could be fined for possessing nicotine liquid because it's a schedule 7 poison under our uh, therapeutic goods act now it's an unenforceable fine uh, and vapors don't get fined for possession, uh, and about 98% of vapors, uh, we've surveyed them, 
in Australia do not even have a prescription. They just buy these products online, which which makes total sense. Mm. Uh, but the flow-on effect is that Australian vape vendors can only sell a vape and they can only sell juice without nicotine. Uh, and then vapors, you know, will buy these products elsewhere. And we want to help these vendors sell these products here yeah. so that vapors can access everything in Australia and not have to go online and not have to buy products from overseas and potentially face fines and break the law. Right, right. <laughs> But uh, why would why would a vapor who who wants his nicotine in in his vape mix, you know, someone who's trying to give up cigarettes, uh, or has recently given up cigarettes, why would they be they would be attracted to the vape shop just to get their device, or uh, and then they would uh, they would buy their juice yeah. online. Yeah, and that's often the case. Uh, the vaping industry in Australia, unlike, say, in England and, and in America, is, is really in its infancy. Mm. In terms of brick and mortar, you know, corner shops that sell vaping equipment, I'd say there's probably only about 200 or 300 shops around the country, um, you know, to varying sizes. Uh, and then there's, you know, online sellers. And the vast majority of them, they sell a starter kit. So it'll be, you know, you're a smoker and you just want to take up vaping. You'll come into the shop, you'll buy your starter kit. Uh, you might buy some liquids. And then you'll get your nicotine online from overseas from New Zealand, mm. and in two days you'll have it shipped in. Uh, so, and that's for someone who's really committed, who really wants to try and quit smoking. But for someone who, uh, a, a, for, for, for someone who's addicted to smoking, even just waiting forty-eight hours to then get a nicotine supply, that's too long for them. So they end up staying on cigarettes. Uh, whereas if you just legislated these products properly and they could access them in the same shop that they can go and buy non-nicotine vaping liquids in, well, you'd have far more people taking up vaping and, and ultimately getting off smoking, which is something that in Australia all of our government policies have failed to, to yeah. achieve. Yeah. Have you been pushing the harm reduction message? Well, you have been in, in, your, uh, in your campaign. Um, but what is, the, what is the response when you actually quote the science to the policy makers and to the politicians there's, there's been a bit of a pendulum swing on that so when we first started uh, vaping real I mean vaping ultimately in, a, in, in the average Australian eyes is still a fringe issue but when this campaign started it was something that was almost not even heard of mm. uh, but you know, we did have Royal College of Physicians report saying that it was 95% less harmful and other, and other data at the time. Uh, and people were quite open to that argument. Uh, and as the campaign progressed and as more information came through, there was more and more evidence flowing through uh, to the point that the evidence was getting updated. You know, every couple of days on our website, we actually have a, a, a run sheet of all the different reports that show vaping is less harmful. And I think we're at about 70 something reports now. Um, what we found, we ran a couple of, of opinion polls and we found that um, the average person was broadly supportive of vaping. When you looked at different photo demographics and whatnot, about two thirds of them were broadly supportive of vaping. Once you explained to them, do you know that vaping is less harmful than smoking? Do you know that it's illegal to possess and this, that and the other? Would you support legalization? The answer is about two thirds yes. That was before the great vape scare back in August of last year, where you had these fake vaping deaths uh, which were really as a result of black market street or THC liquids yeah. containing uh, additives and not That's nicotine but vaping. Bootleg, effectively bootleg juice. Uh, yeah. Bootleg pods. That bootleg juice uh, that were made by, you know, crime syndicates. And, and the flip side is now uh, when you actually uh, survey a non-vapor, about two-thirds of them oppose the legalization of vaping uh, in some as in some aspects, uh, and it sort of s s s sits between there. So I always say, like on these sorts of issues, the pendulum of public opinion can swing back and forth, and it sort of just really depends on what's in the media cycle. So our job at Legalised Vaping is to essentially try and educate the broader public because vapors know that it saved their life. Vapors know that it's helped them quit smoking, but it's also convincing the broader public that this is a net good. Yeah. No, it's there was a the 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 Center for Disease Control in the states. They came out last autumn uh, saying basically that so-called E Valley, which is a horrible misnomer, um, this disease that the that there's hit you know two thousand kids in in the states. 
uh, is actually caused mm. by vitamin E acetate. Um, there was yes. a lot of coverage of that, yet it didn't seem to budge a public opinion much. I think that the damage had been done in terms of making people think that they're putting their lives as much at risk by vaping as, as by smoking. And that kind of stuck. That's a sticky sort of message. Um, and it's, it's very hard to... Yeah, to... And, yeah and, and, and one of the issues with, with vaping uh, as a policy issue is that it really takes several layers of discussion to, to get someone across the issue. Mm. So most people will read a headline so they'll see a headline that says vaping kills teenager yeah. and that's all they need to know. And then they move on with their day and they just go, oh, well, I read an article and it says vaping kills. Um, and from our end, you're having to explain to someone who doesn't necessarily know what vaping is, how it actually is less harmful and how it mimics active smoking, but it's not actually smoking because you're not burning carcinogens and heart. So you're going through multiple levels of education. Mm. And then once someone's educated about vaping, they're 100% supportive and they get it and they are totally across it yeah. and they will always support vaping. But our issue is that we're having to educate people through, to coin it, to, 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 to quote the current president, fake news, uh, and it can be a bit of a process. Yeah, no, it, it's it, it's actually, it, it's, a, it's a hell of a challenge to... to to get over that because the, the, there's a lot of money being put into the anti-vaping message. Um, and as we all know, yes. the likes of Mike Bloomberg have been uh, uh, you know, funding efforts all around the world uh, to, to, to uh, knock vaping back. It's, it's basically an attack. They, they believe that they are attacking the tobacco industry. And it, 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 it mm. does prompt, for me, it pr pr prompts a sort of sporting uh, analogy they should be playing the ball and not the player um, the ball being uh, harm from tobacco and tobacco smoking yeah. uh, instead of trying to reduce harm they are actually attacking the tobacco industry at all costs and this is uh, this is uh, what uh, Bloomberg is you know uh, he's the the biggest proponent of this I mean he's he's got a, a he's got a personal vendetta against the tobacco industry and I'm no fan of the tobacco industry. I don't know about you, but I've been a slave to, 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 to cigarettes for several decades. I started smoking when I was about 16. And, uh, you know, I am no friend of the tobacco yeah. industry. Um, but, uh, you know... Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a cheap pot shot that, that anti-vapors take, and it's a very easy uh, swipe that they can make. Mm. Uh, and again, it comes back to that same thing where... For the anti-vaping message, it's very, very simple to sell it. It's it's all a big tobacco conspiracy and vaping killed these teenagers. Uh, and then they don't have to explain anything. They get to just move on. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you, you've, got to, you've really got to cut through the crap. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the global market share, tobacco companies make up less than 20% of vaping. Right. You know, vaping started, it was made by a pharmacist in China, the first vape. Yeah. Uh, and... It's built from there, and, and most vape companies are, 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 are companies that started making their own small vape, you know, 10 years ago or, or five years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, you and I both know that that's just nothing but a pot shot, but it, it's, one of the, it's one of the things that we just need a campaign against. And if, I think even you could go even further, and you could say that, in fact, what they're doing is they are pushing, they are, they are, they are furthering the interests of big tobacco. Because they, by creating a complex regulation, they're keeping people on cigarettes. It's only the biggest company. Well, it's, well, that as well. But but also, it will further the the move of tobacco companies into vaping, because only big companies will yes. be able to afford to 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 navigate the the complex uh, uh, regulatory environment. We're just dealing at the moment here in Europe. Um, there's news this week that uh, the European member states are urging the European Commission to uh, introduce excise duties on vaping uh, material and juices uh, in line with tobacco excise duties. And if that to happen, all that does, the only people who will be able to afford uh, to, it, it'll be much harder for the small um, uh, juice uh, makers and device makers 
if they have to if they have to navigate this and have to deal with the, the paperwork alone, dealing with excise duties, it's going to it's going to push this into the hands of the big players, and then they are actually helping that they they are helping the tobacco industry to move into this space. Um, but I tell you what, yeah, exactly. Brian, why, why don't we just backstep a little bit? Give me your backstory. First of all, tell me. First question: What do you vape? What's your what's your 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 uh, vape of vapor of choice? So here's here's where I commit ultimate uh, heresy. Yeah. Uh, I'm not actually a vapor. You're not. Uh, I I don't vape. Um, no, 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 no. So we started this campaign uh, basically because we just thought it was the logical thing to do. Uh, I have a background in in, in political advocacy. Uh, I'm broadly in favour of limiting uh, a, a government control of people's lives. Uh, right. You know, I'm a firm believer in civil liberties. Uh, so, vaping was just something that, that that sort of broadly fell under that. It was like, well, how can the government dictate to you that you can't do this, which doesn't kill you, and they're totally okay with you buying a product that potentially will kill you, or kills you know two and three long term users? So yes. it, it really started from there, and then the campaign. You know, built with online signups and, and, and online petitions, uh, uh, much. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit tongue tied, but a lot, a lot more quickly than we expected. Uh, yeah. And then we started campaigning on the on the road, and I actually started meeting vapors, and I met vape vendors, and I met people who had smoked for 20, 30, 40 years, and were smoking a pack a day of cigarettes, and had quit like that, and they tried every other quit method, and they were crediting this product with saving their lives. Uh, so through that, I became a hardcore convert to vaping, not from my own experience, but from seeing what uh, you know, how it had benefited other people. Uh, right. You know, my mum has smoked since she was 14 years old, and she still smokes to this day, uh, and she just simply cannot quit. Uh, she has dexterity issues with her hands, so using a vape is actually too complex for her. But wow. if vaping was legal, say, five years ago, she may have been able to make that switch back then and may have been able to actually finally kick that habit. So whilst I don't personally vape, um, you know, for the odd photo opportunity with a, with a journalist, sometimes they'll make you, you know, get a vape and, and use it, uh, mm. sure, but I don't personally vape. I know that Katarina in my office, uh, who, I met, who I got to quit smoking uh, and switch to vaping, she, uh, without shamelessly self-promoting, she really likes our legalized vaping, uh, Vape Force One juice. Uh, specifically the icy orange pineapple flavor. Uh, uh -huh. So if anyone would like to buy that, make sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Every dollar raised goes towards our campaign. Um, but yeah, so so for me, uh, ultimate act of heresy within the vaping world, I'm not a vapor. Uh, I just think that it's a really important issue uh, and through meeting thousands of vapors, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's something that I really care about. Yeah, no, that's interesting because, I mean, I'm coming at this from... Um, yeah, I, basically, my backstory is I, I mean, I've been a, I've been involved in like you in, in policy areas, uh, public affairs, um, for the last ten years. Before that, I was a journalist for about twenty years. Mm -hmm. uh, shows how old I am. Uh, you can probably see from the little grey uh, touch of grey hair coming in on the beard here. But um, I, I, first of all, like yeah, as a, as an ex uh, cigarette smoker. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I got a, I got a shock last September. I got a, I had a visit to the doctor, and uh, I was told, look, you know, it's no longer fun and games here. This is serious. You've, you've got to stop smoking. Um, and uh, so I, I basically smoked my last cigarette uh, in September, and uh, switched to 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 vaping back then. So I kind of, yeah, I am, I am a vapor, but. I also, like you, you know, I see this as a very interesting and, and a very important um, public policy issue. And, you know, it's not yeah. just an issue in isolation. It's not just an ideological sort of uh, preference for freedom of choice to take the right choices for yourself. It's also it's a question of, you know, public health and money, because the amount of money mm. uh, that uh, public health has to... Uh, the, the, the cost to the public coffers of smokers is huge, um, and by mm. reducing that, uh, by by reducing the, uh, the 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 harm caused by cigarette smoking, 
you are re you are reducing the bill, the burden, the, the financial burden on the state. And mm. that point is made. And when I've been speaking to sort of vape people in the vaping community, uh, who I've been meeting over the last six months, um, you know, they they make that point. But that message doesn't seem to be getting out. It's such a strong message. Uh, it always surprises me. So, I mean, I'm I'm coming at this from a personal point of view. You know, I I credit these things with having helped me. It, it's a it's an attractive enough alternative uh, to a cigarette that I don't feel the urge to go back and and uh, you know take out a tab and 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 light it up, uh, which is great. Uh, so, from a personal point of view, you know, I I, I you know I do I do. Um, you know, it, it's it's helped me personally, but I see this all as a broader as a broader issue. This is this is an area where policymakers are. Uh, it, it's a clear opportunity to add clarity and to bring the scientific orthodoxy uh, into the into the debate. And what what the uh, the tobacco control community and these are the sort of zero tolerance dogmatists, if you like, uh, are, are doing is keeping us out of the debate because they know that as soon as mm. we are in the debate and we bring in the science, then we're going to, we, well, we've got an absolute, you know, a very clear argument is on, uh, the science is on our side. Um, so the strategy of the, our, of the people who are, we, we are up against in this policy debate are basically just trying to shut us down so that we cannot get that message across, and that has to change. Yeah, I think that's one of the key points. Is is that you know once you actually get into the actual data and the science of this, we win every single time, which is why they try and deny that, uh, which is why they throw out labels that it's all just a conspiracy or that it's or, or or that it's all for special interests and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, what they're doing is they're denying the actual uh, uh, voice of people who have managed to make a, a, a switch to a better alternative. And, mm. and, and to, your, to your earlier point about, you know, this is actually a very good solution. Uh, it, it Sometimes I feel like a madman when I'm talking to Australian politicians, but you know, when I say to them, like, we have a market-based solution where we don't have to tax the absolute hell out of people uh, to try and get them to stop smoking and that we know works that doesn't kill them. It's like I don't know how much better it can get, uh, so why don't you just legislate these products? And of course, the fallback is, oh well, we saw something about a, a youth vaping epidemic, uh, mm. which one, once you look at the actual data, isn't accurate, and two, the logical response is, well, obviously, uh, if you want to try and solve a problem, you need to legislate uh, a product, and in order to legislate a product, you need to legalize the product. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I, mean, I think that, the, for me, the takeaway from what's happened in the States is it is a clear example where, you know, this this product, it, first of all, the e-cigarette, e it's a disruptive product. It's it's disrupted the smoking market. I've come from most of my time in the uh, sort of public affairs area over the last 10 years. I've been working for clients in the technology space. And in to, to companies, you know, like uh, Apple and Google and and, uh, and the like, the word disruptive is is good. It's <laughs> disruptive means change. You talk to a bureaucrat about disruptive. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult sometimes, but I think yeah, that that might be changing in the current environment when we're when we're all working from home and, and using technology. We are totally dependent on technology. I think the sort of anti-disruption yes. and anti-technology. Uh, uh, camp uh, in the policy arena uh, are kind of on the back foot now because we are all, you know, we realize that, that, that technology is actually helping us in this situation. Um, but that's another debate. But the fact that this, the, the, that, that the e-cigarette has come along and has disrupted the market, there's, and as you said, you know, it's, it's almost too good to be true. You've got a product that comes along, it imitates the act of smoking it, and it's uh, now that now it's developed over the last ten, uh, well, however many years. It's 2003, so uh, yeah, 17 years. That that's, that's it's a very short life cycle. Uh, the vaping has been around since 2003. The early products I tried them, they were pretty crappy, actually. I, I must admit, I, I didn't like the very early ones. I didn't, I wasn't sold on them. 
when I tried again last autumn, I suddenly went, I went into my local vape shop and I saw an incredible array of products. And those products, I've now, you know, vaping, I, I, I choose various different types of vape uh, materials. I, I, I do uh, use refillable pods um, for my cocoa uh, uh, vape pen. Uh, it's a little cube thing. Uh, this is my favorite one at the particular moment. It's a stealth um, with a, a melon flavor. Um, it's got a bit of a nicotine uh, kick. It, 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 it helps, and there's there's plenty of uh, uh, yeah. It, it's got a, the right balance of um, VG and MG, so it's a, it's, a, it's a nice smoke. It gives. I'm not one of these smokers who goes for a big cloud. I'm, I'm not you know hung up on on having a big big cloud of smoke. I just want something that gives me uh, the nice sensation from smoking. I like smoking. I don't want to change my life. I have to change it because the doctor told me to. So that's why I stopped cigarettes. Yeah. But for me, I enjoy inhaling something and puffing it out. I find it therapeutic. I find it calming. It's not just, it, it is obviously partly the nicotine, but it's not just the nicotine. It's the action. It's the actual process. And it's, and it's yeah. why should I, why should someone who, uh, you know, thinks they know better than me come along and say no 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 you cannot uh, you, you cannot simulate your cigarette uh, uh, addiction well, you, we, you can't enjoy it no exactly it's, it's like enjoy it right so it's, it's one of the things we joke about in the office which is sometimes we feel like uh, a lot of a lot of uh, public health bureaucrats specifically when it comes to, to quitting smoking only want you to do it in ways that you couldn't possibly enjoy uh, so uh, I'm, I'm happy to send the link across to, 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 to you to have a look at and share around. Uh, but in Australia, we have uh, within Victoria, there's an organization called Quit Victoria. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if they still have it now, but I'll check. When we were first doing the campaign, they had a website which was like 100 ways to, to quit smoking. Not a single one of those tips was to maybe try vaping, which we know works. Right. Uh, and some of the suggestions they had were, instead of having a cigarette, pour a glass of milk or rearrange the furniture in your house. Or uh, one of them was, uh, quote, and I quote, do a boogie in your shower. Which I, uh, so do a boogie or have a shower. So I, I imagine that means dance or have a shower. Uh, and quite uh, to be honest, after reading that, all I wanted was a fucking cigarette. Um, and, and, and it's just one of these things where, so you can't, you can't take up a product that tastes like watermelon and quit whilst actually enjoying it but pour a glass of milk and do a dance in a shower and the government's totally fine with that and then they sit there wondering why smoking rates have sat the same in australia for the last five years yeah yeah it's just uh there's also there's a stigma attached i think uh, the the psychological aspect i mean they they they, they, they makes it basically i think the people who who are you know pushing this sort of anti-vaping line the hardest are the ones like like Bloomberg who, who don't smoke and they see it as a weakness uh, and that yes, if you're, it's, it's uh, just, you're just quit just give it up yeah exactly as if uh, you know but, but their, their view is that you know if you if you you know if you're, if you're so weak that you need to have this it's not a question of weakness it's a question of, of preference it's a question of lifestyle if I could, I, yeah. I enjoyed smoking cigarettes. You know, if there was no harm to smoking cigarettes, I would have carried on smoking cigarettes. Um, but there is a harm, and it's and, and it's, it's it's no good for my heart, for my lungs, for you know, for, for a number of things. And so finally, I've kind of yeah. you could say I've grown up uh, enough to to actually take the action to to make this switch. And in that in itself is quite hard it's not it's not an easy thing to to switch a habit that you've had um for decades into doing something as a replacement habit that is less harmful it's it's not that easy uh, in itself but i what i, I, I what, think that's what gets us so frustrated yeah well i but i just i can't stand <laughs> the stigma they are attached to to people who are vaping and we shouldn't listen to vapors because they are just uh, un, you know, unwitting sort of uh, puppets of the tobacco Horns industry, or something. Yeah, I mean, God, it's yeah, so it, it, it's it, it is it it is, it is frustrating. Uh, and, and on the sort of I'll just quit, uh, you know, mentality when it when it comes to cigarettes. Uh, you know, the audacity that you can just say to someone who is genuinely addicted 
uh, and nicotine is addictive and you know it's not the harmful uh, thing in cigarettes but it's obviously you know not good compared to not consuming nicotine mm. but the idea that you can just say to people oh look you've been doing that for 20 30 years you tried four or five different ways to quit multiple times and it hasn't worked but that's just your fault uh, so just get mm. over it you don't need mm. vaping yeah. it's just it's 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 very easy to make those claims when you've never actually smoked and when you've never yeah. actually dealt with uh, uh, you know addiction and, and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah it's it's, uh, it's a very it's a very uh, I can see this is I think over the next year or so and the next 18 months this is I think the the, the debate is going to intensify I mean we've come along as the world vapors uh, uh, alliance to try and and you know get the message across because I mean there there are a number of advocates who've been in this business for a long time I mean when did you start Brian when did you get involved uh, in this? so we so so legalized vaping started in 2017 right. uh, we 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 did our road tour in in the beginning of 2018, but ultimately, uh, you know, we, two and a half years the campaign's been going for, uh, from when it started as an online petition to when we got lots of signups and then started fundraising and then did an on the road campaign and it's just gone from strength to strength. I must admit, I thought that all of the lockdowns and things like that would result in this campaign probably staggering and coming to a bit of a halt, but uh, we shifted all our operations. To, punch out a lot of video content and digital, you know, content and do live streams and all that kind of stuff and the campaign keeps ticking along because, you know, vapors are committed people. It's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it, in the in the few years that I've been doing advocacy work, vapors seem to be the most committed because not only is it something that they like and not only is it something that they broadly support, it's actively helping them. So it's helping them save money and it's helping them live a healthier lifestyle. So. Uh, you know, they're very active uh, and the campaign just keeps going from strength to strength. And I, another just a little anecdote is, is someone I know in Germany who has a, a, a Vapor uh, YouTube channel. Uh, he's actually a policeman and he was a very heavy smoker. He was like two or three packets a day, man. And he switched and he now runs marathons. I mean, any wow. smoker... Runs, yeah, I mean, with, with, like, uh, I, I've met a lot of people who who have taken up vaping after smoking for years and yeah, their lung function, you know, goes back to normal. Yeah. Uh, people who have lost weight because they've increased their fitness and been able to run and do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, 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 I'm one of the most memorable people I ever met uh, was during the uh, first road tour that we did. Uh, we're in Coffs Harbour, which is just up on the New South Wales coast and he was, he's a truck driver. And he smoked two packs of 40 cigarettes a day, so 80 cigarettes a day when he was driving on the road because wow. the nicotine helped him concentrate. And he, he quit with vaping by accident just because a friend of his left a vape behind and he started using it. Uh, and I said, oh, what's the you know number one thing for you out of this? Was it that you're feeling healthier or that you're saving, you know, uh, I think he was saving about $14,000 a year by, by no longer smoking and, and vaping instead. Uh, and for him, it wasn't that. It was the fact that he could run around in the backyard with his kids and not get puffed out. Yeah. Because he yeah. used to try and do that, and he'd get puffed out. Yeah. And that was the only thing that mattered to him. So, yeah, there's a lot to be said that it, it, it increases your lung function and it helps you live a much healthier lifestyle. Yeah. You mentioned the 95% figure, and you mentioned the college physician, physicians in Australia. Was their research based on the Public Health England research, or was it a separate study that found... Oh, so I was talking about the Royal College of, of no, I was talking about the Royal College of Physicians uh, over in the UK. Um, right. Uh, there has been this has been very slow movement by Australian health groups here. Although Royal Australian College of General Practitioners practitioners now supports vaping, drug and al drug and alcohol nurses Australia uh, support vaping. Basically, a lot of the frontline health stuff that actually see the impacts of smoking and see the impacts of people that have switched to vaping, they support it. So drug and alcohol nurses who, who see addicted people that are going through addictions, they support it. Uh, psychologists who see the effects of people who are addicted to, to tobacco products and, and, and in, uh, you know, in communities that are affected by mental health, smoking rates are you know, 60% uh, in Australia, uh, they support it. 
it's really only uh, people that work at departmental levels who live in Canberra uh, and think mayonnaise is spicy and don't actually interact with real people mm. that uh, have these policies that vaping should remain illegal because they don't actually interact with the people that it's benefited because they live in a very uh, tight bubble uh, yeah. where all they do is meet other bureaucrats and talk about how they're going to look at sections, you know, 47A of the Excel sheet that they're working on that day. Yeah, yeah. And of course, they're, they're supported by the WHO. And um, that's <laughs> probably the biggest sort of on the policy front, the, the biggest obstacle in term, in glo globally in terms of, uh, uh, you know, helping to make a transition to this disruptive technology, this healthier alternative. Um, when you have the yep. framework convention on tobacco control, mm -hmm. Um, basically, uh, in its in in the in that quasi treaty, they're basically saying that uh, people consumers should not be listened to um, because they're, 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 we are we are counted as uh, extensions of the tobacco industry, and um, that has to change. And that's if if if, if I had to put my finger I mean you know I, I'm quite new to this you, you've been you've been in this game for, for a while I'm new to it I'm 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 picking up I'm learning but in turn I see this as a communications challenge largely um, if uh, the, the first yes. the first objective is to get in the room and to get over this uh, blacklisting of people who actually have real uh, real life experience of this, and that that that's it, that's a major factor. I have just you know since I started yeah, that's in this area, I've, I've been speaking to okay. other advocates uh, from Inco, for example, um, and there are various groups mm -hmm. around the world who've been who've been on this case for for a decade, uh, in fact over a decade, um, and mm -hmm. you know they they have been pushing this argument for for a long time. What I think what they've done very well, I think, is that they've built up, there is a community of consumer groups, vapors of groups around the world, um, and there is a bit of a network, there is an exchange of information. Where, where they fall down is where they actually communicate and get that message outside of their bubble, outside of the, the vaping uh, community and the, and the sort of harm reduction community, and into the policy making environment. That's where they're falling down. Yeah not due to the lack of effort. I mean, they've done incredible work, but... Yeah, uh, well, I mean, there's, there's countless groups that have put in mountains of effort on, on this issue. Uh, in, in Australia, it's a, it's a really tough nut to crack just because of, of sort of how the regulatory landscape sits here. Yeah. But what we've always tried to focus on is, well, we know the vapors are supportive and the vape vendors are supportive and we'll communicate to them every day of the week about what we're doing. Uh, but ultimately, you know, there's about 300,000 vapors in Australia. There's 2.8 million smokers, and those are people that could be vapors if they if they can't quit with it, you know, through other means. Uh, so our focus is trying to basically talk to those people and say, hey, like you're smoking something that will kill you. You're paying through the nose in tobacco excise, uh, and this is a product that you could potentially switch to that'll be, you know, less harmful for you. Uh, so why don't you get involved with us so that we can. Uh, try and campaign, and that and that's what we're trying to do is is to break that cycle of, of being in the echo chamber, so to speak, yeah. uh, and and have a wider audience as well as get in front of policymakers. Uh, and you know, touch wood, we have been relatively successful at getting in front of policymakers and, and and moving the pendulum closer and closer. It has taken longer than I expected. Uh, in my naivety, I thought that this issue was so logical that it made no sense, and that. A basic petition would get the government to see the right way forward, uh, but you know the wheels of government turn extremely, extremely slowly. So yeah, it's a marathon. Onwards and upwards. It's definitely a marathon. Well, Brian, it's been great to talk to you. Uh, happy World Vape Day, and um, I wish you and all your vaping uh, supporters all the best. And in your public uh, advocacy work, keep up the good work. Uh, I, we, we're going to be trying to emulate some of the stuff you've done. It's really, really cool uh, how you managed to galvanise people. So, do you want to say a word to to our viewers just to to say goodbye? Or yeah, I mean, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, I really do appreciate it, and uh, you know, happy World Vape Day to you as well. Uh, to anyone watching, if you're not already a supporter of our campaign, 
uh, please consider becoming a supporter. Uh, even if you're not in Australia, just sharing our content uh, and getting the word out there about how ridiculous the laws in Australia are uh, actually uh, help our campaign immensely. So you can go to legalisevaping.com.au uh, and find out all the information you need about our campaign, how it operates and the ways that you can take action. Uh, if you're watching and you are in Australia and you've not uh, taken action before, if you go to our website, we have an Act Now portal and based on your postcode, you can send an email to your elected representative telling them that you want vaping legal. Uh, you can tweet at them as well, uh, so they get a notification on their Twitter account as well. Uh, and you can even request a meeting with your local uh, elected representative so that you can demand legal vaping in Australia. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Brian. Take care, mate. No worries. Thanks, guys. Talk soon.